On November 19, 1984, Benjamin Benji Wilson was a senior at Simeon Vocational Career Academy, a star basketball player ranked number one in the country, and a new father. On November 20th, 1984, Benjamin sat fighting for his life in the Chicago emergency room. Born in March of 1967, Benjamin Benji Wilson was raised on Chicago's South Side in the Chatham neighborhood by his mother, his father, and his older brother, Curtis. As a youth, Benji attended St. Dorothy School, then transferred to Martha Ruggles Elementary School. Already standing 5'10 as a preteen, Benji would play basketball in Chicago's summer leagues and at Chicago's Cole Park. In 1981, Benji's freshman year at Simeon, Benji was a junior varsity point guard off the bench. By the fall of 1982, Benji stood at six foot five and was a good player, yet he failed to make the national rankings for freshmen and sophomore. At the urging of varsity players Bobby Tribble and Tim Bankston, coach Bob Hambrick allowed Benji to join varsity. Benji was the only sophomore on the varsity team. He had a good season and his ball handling and ability to score made Benji a factor. During the summer break, Benji grew to six foot seven inches and his abilities were undeniable. I have a goal and, you know, I want to be successful and so I do what it takes to be successful. And that is, you know, when I go home, you know, I study and do my work and go to class. Kind of corny stuff. Well, it works. Benji led Simeon to the Illinois AA state championships, which they won for the 1983 and 1984 season. Big and strong team. First shot right down by Ben Wilson. Right, so little stutter step and shot by Lundgren is not good. Forcing the board, Ben Wilson. Bankston handles it nicely. Wilson steps in. Got it. Binion goes all the way and down the lane, has it blocked by Benjamin Wilson. Please shoot here. It goes over to Wilson for an easy one. Most difficult call he has to make. Over the summer, Benji attended the invite-only week-long Athletes for Better Education camp where Benji excelled. The scouts in attendance named Benji the number one player in the country, the first time any Chicago player had held that honor. Around this time, Benji also became a father. According to sources, the relationship with Benji and his child's mother, Jatan Rush, was contentious in the weeks leading to his death. Benji and Rush were involved in a heated argument on school grounds when a teacher intervened. The teacher was somehow pushed down and Benji served a multi-day suspension for the incident. Rush was allegedly avoiding Benji and not allowing him to see their child. So on November 20th, Benji decided to skip lunch with his teammates in an attempt to speak with Rush. What happens next is a matter of contention. According to Jatan Rush, her and Benji left Simeon and walked down the street toward a popular luncheonette near Simeon. As the two approached the store, a small group of youths were already standing outside. While passing the group, Benji bumped 16-year-old William Moore. Benji responded, excuse me. According to Rush, Moore responded with, what did you say? Benji repeated, excuse me, when Omar Dixon Moore's 15-year-old accomplice asked Benji if he had any money and began to go through Benji's pockets. Benji pushed him away, and that's when, according to Rush, Dixon said, let's shoot this punk. Moore pulled out a gun and shot Benji twice. Yet, according to defense attorneys, 
the events played out a little bit differently. Public defender Rita Fry, one of Dixon's lawyers, claims that Dixon played no role in the shooting and never told Moore to shoot Benji nor went in Benji's pockets. Another one of Moore's lawyers, Isaiah Gant, admits Moore shot Wilson, yet claims Moore fired in self-defense after he was confronted and intimidated by Benji's six foot seven, two hundred and thirty-nine pound stature. According to Gant, when Wilson bumped Moore, Moore responded with quote, Ain't you gonna say excuse me, big old tall boy? Moore then said Benji was peeved and angry and approached the five foot nine hundred and thirty five pound Moore. According to Moore, he only stood belly high to Benji. Rush was trying to get Benji to calm down and try to pull him away from the situation. Moore then showed Benji a gun to which Benji responded, what are you going to do? Shoot me. Then, according to Moore, Benji lunged at him, at which time Moore shot Benji twice. The first shot hit Benji in the groin, and the second shot hit Benji in the stomach. Moore and Dixon fled the scene. At this point, Benji is laying against the fence, struggling to breathe, yet still coherent. An ambulance was called at 12.37 p.m. Coach Bob Hambrick called Chicago news anchor Warner Saunders, making the media aware of the story. The ambulance did not arrive on scene until 1.20 p.m. As Coach Hambrick was preparing to drive Benji to the hospital himself, Benji was taken to St. Bernard Hospital. Yes, St. Bernard is not now, nor has it ever been, a trauma center nor does St. Bernard have an emergency surgeon on staff. At the time of the shooting, the emergency protocol in Chicago was for a victim to be taken to the closest hospital, which in this case was St. Bernard. The closest trauma center to Simeon or St. Bernard would have been Cook County Hospital. November 20th was a Tuesday. The shooting happened early afternoon. The traffic along the route for the most direct route to Cook County Hospital for that time of day would have been about 20 minutes. Despite the protocol, any level of authority from medical staff to media outrage could have and should have influenced the decision to take Benji to Cook County Hospital and be treated by a trauma surgeon within one hour of the shooting. Instead, Benji sat in St. Bernard's emergency room and went virtually untreated for three hours. Doctors were optimistic that they could save Benji. Yet Benji's mom, who was a nurse by trade, and Benji's older brother were not so certain. They noticed that the soles of Benji's feet were very pale from the bullet damaging Benji's liver and aorta, resulting in blood not being able to reach the lower half of Benji's body. That along with the delayed treatment, made Benji's mom conclude that even if he made it through the surgery, he would never recover from a vegetative state. Benji's mom decided to have her son removed from life support, and Benji transitioned shortly after. And the city went into mourning. Ben Wilson became another victim of Chicago's senseless gang violence, and the school and community mourned the loss of a very special young man. William Moore received the maximum 40-year sentence despite Moore's attorney's claim that the prosecution only was going for the maximum because Ben Wilson was a superstar. 
as if his client would not deserve the maximum amount of years if Ben Wilson had just been a regular Chicago student. Omar Dixon received a 30-year sentence. The Wilson family filed a $10 million negligence lawsuit against the physicians and medical technicians that treated Benji. The suit was settled for an undisclosed amount. Chicago emergency protocol change from taking a victim to the nearest hospital to taking a victim to the nearest fully staffed trauma center. On the 25th anniversary of Benji's death, Simeon retired his jersey. NBA player Nick Anderson, friend and teammate, wore the number 25 throughout college and his NBA career to honor Benji, and so did Derrick Rose.